Now then, welcome back. What we're doing today? It's a very good question and one I ask myself every single time my eyes open in the morning. Um, so today we are, on a brewing level, we are brewing a New England Pale Ale using quite hefty editions of Brew One, Citra and I don't know yet. Might knock some Luminosa in as well, but we'll see. Which is a new hop by the way from Indie Hops. Absolutely fantastic. Used in the pills recently. Absolutely epic. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that aside, but we're also using a new WHC yeast. Uh, so we're going for Pineapple Passion, in my best American accent, um, which is a new yeast from WHC, and apparently it's a psychedelic IPA yeast. I'm trying to remember all this on the top of my head from what I've read on the WHC site, because there isn't a lot of information out there. But obviously, as the clue in the title, it does pack a hefty pineapple and tropical punch, apparently. Uh, and if it's anything to go by what Mango Madness was like, and obviously I know that's one of the thermotolerant yeasts, whatever thermotolerant wants to be on its day off, um, this does ferment quite warm, but nowhere near in the realms of Kvaik and uh, thermotolerant. Uh, so we're talking roughly around 22, 23, up to a range of 26, I think the way it sees website said. I'll be still going on the slightly middle ground of that, I think maybe 24. Which is ideal because the weather this week has been ridiculously high like 26 up to 30s and that's even in Huddersfield uh, so it's a little bit warm and as you can tell I don't know if it's showing on camera I'm a bit tacky myself already and it's only 20 past nine uh, but anyway yeah so the grist we've got uh, um, ooh, I nearly said Simpsons then it's not uh, we've got faucets lager malt as a rough as a basic base uh, backed up with a very small percentage of local Amaris Otter and a little bit of Simpsons Vienna uh, just to get it used up because I've had some in stock and it's just sitting around us. So I thought it'll bring a nice little colour addition to it. Uh, what else have we got in there? Um, we've gone for the Malt Miller's own uh, toasted wheat, uh, sorry, toasted pale oats, which are fit in their own right to just eat uh, in your hand. The fit, just, just buy some and just eat them. Um, but yeah, the last few uh, beers or new, well, typically hazy beers I've done have always come out really, really well using those. Uh, so they'll be a regular on my uh, list for doing when doing these style beers. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what this uh, passion, passion pineapple, passion uh, uh, tropical psychedelic yeast brings uh, to the table. Uh, obviously, the brewery one's quite pineapple heavy anyway, so it'll be interesting to see what occurs. But yeah, let's get mashed in. So I've already mashed in, so in there is a uh, Fawcett's Lager Malt, uh, some Fawcett's Low Colour Marisotta and just a touch of Vienna uh, and obviously some uh, beautiful uh, Malt Miller Toasted Oats which are just fit to eat as they are. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's been mashed in for about 20 minutes or so, so we'll start getting rigged up to uh, do a recirculation. Happy days. So about an hour and a half in total of mashing. So that's a uh, full 60 minutes at 67C. We're going for a nice medium body. Uh, and then plus a mash out of 20 minutes or so, obviously with a 10 minute ramp thereabouts. So but yeah, so we're ready to start running off. We'll get started. It's a God, absolutely gorgeous color. Makes great viewing. Obviously, you can see now. What colour? Obviously, once the yeast goes in, that should, uh, with the descriptions of it all, it should be uh, haze positive. Um, not that obviously that's why everyone looks in, but I still like to have nice clear wear heading to the kettle. And I'm sure you've done a good job on the mash. Well, yeah, look at that. As you can see, we're part way up now. I did forget to put the uh, the trub filter in, which is now in, obviously. But it's quite a darkish colour now, actually, which obviously I'm, I'm hoping it might end up being a nice burnt orange uh, when it comes to actually uh, with the yeast in it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what it comes out, nice and sweet. Oh, uh. So I've got a nice even runoff. Sparge is nice and even. Uh, we've got a little... Uh, 
manometer on the side that will, uh, gives us the pressure differential within the mash tun. Um, there won't be much grain coming through, so definitely the mash has done its job. So, but yeah, so I know what sports win you. Um, really enjoyed using the V150 as a kettle. Um, so obviously, as we as we mentioned in the last video, thanks to Danny for that. Uh, really, really appreciated. Um, the swap helped massively in terms of being able to fill the F100, which I've never been fully been able to do and take advantage of its size. Uh, which especially when it comes to my lagers, which go far too quick because obviously generally when people come around, that's what they want to drink the most. Um, it's been a case of the the capacity in the actual boiler itself has prevented more boiler because uh, obviously I was always going to the peak of what the B80 could do in terms of boil. So there was a boil off risk, uh, sorry, boil over risk was always massive, uh, which obviously this negates. So it's, it's been an absolute dream to use. Um, the system itself is running exactly as I intended. It's perfect. Uh, we're, we're getting roughly an excess of about 85% mash efficiencies uh, most times, um, which again, just especially when you're brewing bigger batches and under litre batches and stuff, it just helps with that little bit of extra cost savings. Um, which is always, always nice, but yeah, it's going good basically. I'm going to try and um, obviously with the um, the videos I've been doing, um, I've been trying to do more. It's just been one of those things where it's just you, you get that busy, and with me having a, a multitude of hobbies like I do, and also a house and a wife, and uh, it, it just everything takes its time, but um, yeah, so there we go. And because personally I can't stand brewing beers that don't have bittering hops, we're adding one brew, one pellet. That's all the difference. Just approaching the boil. Obviously we have an extremely large one pellet dose for the uh, first world edition. I'm just waiting for it to get up to 82 litres and we can start the boil timer. So we're pretty much at the end of the boil. So, well, we are at the end of the boil. I don't know why I say we're pretty much. We are. So time to turn it off. Drop the tank temperature to 80 degrees. Because we've got a nice addition. The brew one and Citra, and Citra Incognito. So we've got uh, 150 grams of Citra and 100 grams of Brew On with 16 grams, so one pouch of incognito which I've already pre-dosed to the uh, to the to the hops so it allows it to cling to them a little bit also just solve that last bit and we'll get the whirlpooling going Tell you what, incognito smells absolutely insane. As does this to be fair. Look at that. Look at that gold. Right, let that sit for an hour. Right, so there we go. We're down to 32C in the tank, 28C on the return temp. So, by my judging, we're ready to rack because we're going to ferment this obviously around 24, 25. Uh, so, you start there, happy. Um, I'll submit, didn't smell the greatest, but you starts don't always smell the best. Uh, so, it's just a case of transferring into tank. 
It's like uncovering the ancient city of uh, Atlantis, except it's just a hot comb. Pretty much it. Three, two, one! Now then, you join us back here on an extremely wet and appallingly miserable September day in Yorkshire. Anyway, the beer's brewed, finished at 10 16, um, so that gives us 5.9%, which is just a nice sort of heavier end of a pale ale, I suppose, start of an IPA. Um, so what did we actually do? Um, we ended up hopping with Citra, Incognito, Citra and Brew One. Uh, when it came to dry hop, on the first day it dropped to something like 10.36 or something like that, or 10.32ish. 10 so we decided to dry up with 100 grams of Citra and 100 grams of Brew One. Um, smelled amazing on day, day one, day two-ish or whatever that was I think. Um, after that decided to taste it towards the end of fermentation, drop the temperature uh, to five degrees had a taste it was actually pretty good at that point um decided just to dry hop with 100 grams of citra because the aroma of it was insane as in i don't necessarily think you need a massive dry up or that said the amount of hops that are in the whirlpool because you do get a lot of aroma off the yeast as per like mango madness um so yeah overall pretty impressed with it actually because the yeast starter smelled atrocious I uh, wasn't that happy about pitching it to be honest, but so yeah, join us on kegging day. I'm gonna keg it up and have a taster and see what we think. Join us in a minute. Nice steady flow. All into the keg that's been vented. So now then. So I've taken a, a couple of sips already from this. Uh, absolutely stinks. Um, you do get like a really fruity note, tropical uh, vibes on the uh, aroma. Uh, sorry for the noise in there. There's a lot going on at the moment. We're cleaning fermenters, ready to rack another beer in tomorrow. Uh, which will be an ESB to welcome the onslaught of autumn. Um, but yeah, 100% um, if you are struggling with uh, some IPAs, and obviously the, I would also argue the cost of brewing using the IPAs. Uh, yeast like this are an absolute godsend. Uh, the aroma of them is nothing but stone fruit, peach, tropical, just, it's just insane. I'm, I'm crap at describing beers. Like I've said this in the past. Uh, by the way, the sun has come out here. It's absolutely glorious. Um, but yeah, so overall, um, I think I've already said it's come out at a rather hefty 5.9%. Uh, drinks easy, uh, com compared to it is that ABV, but yeah. 100% rush out and buy it. It's a banging, banging yeast. So yeah, again, that concludes another video. Uh, next time it will be another six month or three month or year until the next one. Uh, I will start pushing out more regular content because um, I, I do enjoy making it. It's just uh, time and effort. And sometimes I'm just devoid of the effort. One more to the point. I get a quick brew beer squeezed in before work, which isn't always easy to record, stop, and then obviously get ready for work and then leave the house in a complete rush and a complete mess, leaving the brewery in a tip, like it pretty much is at the moment. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, see you again.